You're Meanwhile, welcome. the president is calling for his Justice Department to allow members of Congress to review documents related to the FBI informant. He tweeted this, that the FBI or DOJ was infiltrating a campaign for the benefit of another campaign. That is a really big deal. Only the release or review of documents that the House Intelligence Committee, also the Senate Judiciary, is asking for can give the conclusive answers. Drain the swamp. First guest up, Congressman Matt Gates. The Florida Republican sits on the House Judiciary Committee. Great to see you. Uh, let's start with this idea about this informant. And the argument against it, Congressman, is that it might put that informant in danger. And you say what? Well, this is a particular individual who has been reported on to be involved in intelligence activities with campaigns dating back to the 80s. And so it's not as if this is particularly news regarding the affiliation of this individual. I will say, Harris, the White House is not yet fully informed regarding the extent to which intelligence was collected on the Trump campaign. There is additional information that uh, House investigators have collected, and we need to make sure that the White House gets appropriately informed about that because. Uh, it will not be enough to have Rod Rosenstein and others at the Department of Justice investigate themselves. We got enough investigations where the Justice Department is investigating themselves. More than almost anything we've discussed in the past, this is a basis to appoint a second special counsel, someone who is independent, and we need the president to declassify the information immediately regarding this intelligence collection on the so, Trump campaign so that we can talk about it with you. So, Congressman, uh, Representative Jim Jordan said that he had written a letter directly he and others had written a letter mm -hmm. directly to the president about declassifying information, making it less redacted. Where are we on that? Well, we need the president to immediately do that. Uh, what was I don't his know response? that he's given a direction. I don't know that we've received a response yet, other than the tweet, which kind of in and of itself weaves uh, a, a difficult catch 22. He says in the tweet he wants the Depart Department of Justice to investigate the FBI and the Department of Justice. Uh, again, that has not proven fruitful. We're in like Groundhog Day with Justice, where we request documents. Wow. They give us too many redactions. You know, then we have to fight with them back and forth. We need the president to immediately declassify this information information so we can talk about it with the American people. So you are in Groundhog Day with the DOJ. Uh, that will be a line of, of this Monday, no doubt. So what would you like for the DOJ to do at this point uh, in terms of if they don't do this, what's the alternative? What's a plan B? Well, of course, I would like Jeff Sessions to step up and renounce his recusal and take control of this investigation. Yes, I have, and he has said he's totally unwilling to do that. It's it's like you know the uh, over the Department of Justice, he's got Stockholm syndrome. He's become sympathetic with his captors over there in the deep state, and and so that or would be one thing. Or maybe it's because he's recused himself. Well, yeah, but that's the, the recusal itself is the problem. There's no legal or factual basis for that recusal to exist. And the consequence of that recusal is that Rod Rosenstein, the very individual who is signing renewals of the FISA warrants, now has the ability to send this latest uh, allegation off to investigation land and then use that as a basis to not produce documents to Congress because he can say it's the subject of an ongoing investigation. Wow. So we need to get out of this cycle, well, declassify the documents, and expose the deed states for what they have done, in particular, their intelligence collection on President Trump's campaign. Uh, real quickly, Congressman Gates, uh, if you move forward with the infiltrator, the informant, whatever this person is, uh, is there a way to deal with that element and to find out what really happened with that person inside the Trump campaign without divulging that person's identity? Well, uh, probably there is. It's not the person's identity that's at issue. The issue is why was intelligence being collected? But Democrats say if you put collected? it out there, it'll endanger that person. So the identity yeah, does this come isn't into about, play. Yeah, but this isn't about, you know, the, look, th there are ways we can protect specific identities. But let's keep in mind, I don't think people here were being used, like, unwittingly. I think this was a coordinated mm. scheme to collect intelligence on the president's campaign. But look, there are ways we can still protect sources and methods. We've got to figure out why the intelligence was used. What did it uh, manifest into? Was the Trump uh, Russia investigation in any way influenced by illegal surveillance on a political campaign? Those are the questions we have to answer, and they bear right. no relationship to the specific identity of the informant. I, I want to move on here. I would just say this last word. The American people are looking at this and maybe wondering Republicans, Republicans, both the DOJ and Republicans in the House Intel, it gets confusing. Why can't they work it out? Let's move on. Uh, Robert Mueller told the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, if he interviews the president by mid-July, he should have the Russia probe wrapped up by September 1st. What do you make of that? If any lawyer 
uh, advises President Trump to sit for an interview with Robert Mueller, they need to immediately notify their malpractice insurance carrier. Ooh. This would be a perjury trap. We already know how biased the Mueller team is. The president knows this. We know the tactics that they've used to try to go and find totally unrelated events to Russia collusion and then to try to use that to squeeze people. Now, they've, uh, they're beyond Russia. They're wandering around the Middle East with the Emiratis and the Qataris trying to drum up some collusion narrative. This would be a disaster if the president sits for this interview and no reasonable lawyer should recommend that to him. But if there's an opportunity, though, to get the investigation wrapped up before the midterm election, the president is saying, it, you know, you, would you even want to look at that? Because what he's saying is that this conversation about the Russia probe could actually hurt the midterm elections for Republicans. So what do you do? Look, there are voters are not going to be voting on Russia. Voters are going to be voting on their own economic conditions. And if the president thinks that sitting down with Robert Mueller is going to hasten the conclusion of this, then uh, that would be a terrible miscalculation. If he sits and with no Robert one says Mueller, he that will extend that. the investigation. Yeah, right. no, 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 no one is saying that. Yeah, yeah, well, you were just posturing it as a potential to wrap up the investigation. My point is, it won't. It will extend the investigation. It will launch it into a variety of unrelated activities mm. that have nothing to do with foreign interference in the election. Again, you see the Mueller probe now having to go and investigate these things that have nothing to do with Russia at all to try to drum up collusion narratives. And so uh, we've mm. got to wrap this up, I think, in Congress and at the Justice Department. The president should not sit for that interview. It's an interesting point that you make, Congressman Gates, because we have seen such a broad look a far afield from collusion potentially uh, by the Mueller investigative team. Great to see you today. Thank you. You've given us a lot to talk about. Thank you. All right.